Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take this image here. Uh, I haven't done really too much to it in Lightroom, um, so I want to do my major heavy editing right here inside of Photoshop using a wonderful older uh, plug-in uh, called Vivesa 2 from the Nick Collection. Uh, DxO own the Nick Collection right now, and I'll explain more about that shortly here, but we're going to take this image and use Vivesa 2 to simply and efficiently adjust this image, and you'll see how powerful it is here shortly, so uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, I thought we'd take a little trip over to the uh, DxO Nick Collection 2018 um, website so you can get an idea of what all you get here with the Nick Collection. You can buy it now, the whole collection, $69.00. Uh, Nick originally sold this collection for like 500 bucks, and it was worth every penny, believe me. Most photographers in this world swear by the Nick collection, and uh, you're going to love it. I'm in no way affiliated with Nick, so I don't get commissions when you buy Nick. I just love it, and I want to show it to you guys and, and teach you how it works, okay? But anyway, let's, let's get a look at all the wonderful things you get here. And it totally works now. I do want to say this also. When Google owned Nick, they gave it away free, but... They never updated it, so it was pretty much a worthless piece of software. But thank you, DxO, because what they've done, guys, is they've totally updated it, and now it works with all pretty much a lot of modern software today. Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Elements, I believe Affinity Photo, and who knows what else. And, and you can even use it standalone, I believe. It's a little tricky to use it, and I don't really recommend doing it that way. But... Um, I use it as a plugin, and that's how I'm going to teach you how to use it. But anyway, let's take a look at the Nick Collection. You have Color Effects Pro. We're going to get into a lot of training on Color Effects Pro. Wonderful software. I can't say enough about it. Silver Effects Pro, pretty much the industry standard for black and white conversions. Today, we're looking at Vivesa, a great piece of software um, to, to quickly adjust, edit your images, to pretty much perfection it's great and it gets you gets you there really fast and you don't have to be a seasoned expert in photoshop to make really great edits and you'll see why i'm saying that today when i show you how this works so stay tuned for that also analog effects pro great software i mean we're going to dive into this too you're going to love this if you like that uh instagram -y type look some really uh really cool uh artistic looks in your image analog effects pro this is your baby it's awesome Check this out. There's the before and the after. You know, so that's just one one example there, but really, really cool stuff, guys. And they have other things like HDRFX Pro. You get all this, Sharpener Pro, Define. Everything comes in this Nick's collection, guys, for uh, 69 bucks, And you can get a free 30-day trial, so give it a shot. So let's get started. All right, let's get started, guys. We're going to launch Pavesa in a second here, but first off, I have a bunch of holes in my leaves here, which I really hate. And this is very important, guys. I do a lot of flower photography. So believe me when I tell you this, you really want to clean up your images. If you have these ugly holes and different ugly spots on leaves and things like that, or, you know, pieces of your flower bit out by bugs, fix those up. The healing brush does a great job at fixing that stuff up. So I highly recommend it. Now, to do that, we want to put a blank layer above our background layer so we can work non-destructively. I don't want to actually heal these holes on my actual background layer. Okay, so we put a blank layer above. Uh, type J for the healing brush, and that's on Mac or PC. And then uh, go up to the menu bar for that healing tool up here. It's set to content aware. Um, content aware is what I have it set for. And I have sample all layers checked. Very important. So... When sample all layers is checked, when you do your healing, it will not do the healing on the background, but on this blank layer here. Okay, so all we need to do, guys, and this is simple, is just take our healing brush, and you can adjust your size. This is not a uh, tutorial about a healing brush, so let me just clean these up. And look, I'm just like painting over these, and they are going away. It's like magic, isn't it? It's really awesome. I love this healing brush. Thank you, Adobe. All these little goobers on my images as bob ross used to say look at these little goobers i want to get rid of these goobers they're going away not in my world you do not stay ugliness i only make beautiful images and so healing brush i applaud you 
So there we go, guys. So that's done. The next thing we need to do is merge these two layers together, and then we'll go into Viveza. So to do that, I'm going to use a shortcut of Shift, Option, Command, and E on a Mac. That merges these two layers into one. On a PC, that would be Shift, Alt, Control, E. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Not being a Windows guy, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. All right. Anyway, so let's get going. So the next thing we want to do, guys, is come up to the menu here and find filter. Give it a click. Come down to Nick Collection and come down to Vivesa 2. I know on the site they call it Vivesa, but it is Vivesa 2 because it has been updated. All right. Even before DxO bought it, it's been updated. Let's dive into Vivesa 2. On the right-hand side of the interface, guys, up at the top here, notice where it says add control point. You click that to get a control point. And then you have uh, a couple icons. One that says group and ungroup. I'll explain those later. They're very powerful for grouping up your control points or ungrouping them. So you can make a bunch of control points adjustments at once. Like you might have three or four control points that you want to adjust at one time. And that's what that's all about. But not today on this episode. It's an introductory level uh, tutorial today and you'll notice here this section of global and you have all these standard adjustments in here pretty standard brightness contrast saturation structure shadow adjustments warmth but unstandard you have this red green and blue sliders so you can adjust the uh the way the channels are mixing on on this image which is pretty powerful and uh, i'll show you that in a little bit here uh, and then you have this hue adjustment so you can adjust the overall hue of your image and by the way when you adjust these adjustments and you want to reset them back, all you have to do is double click the little triangle and that'll set them back. Let's add our first control point. What we're going to do is, with our mouse, hover over this little icon here for add control point. There are shortcuts for that too. And the shortcut is shift command A on a Mac and I believe it is shift control A on a PC, which is very powerful. So. If you hover over that, it will remind you of that. You'll be using control, uh, shortcuts a lot, guys. So let's give that a click. That gives us a control point. All we have to do is pick a place on our image now to drop that control point down, and I'm going to drop it right here. Okay. And when I do, you see what happens here. This little tree of adjustments appears here before your very eyes right here. And these adjustments are the same adjustments that you see over here. And you'll notice one other thing. This used to say global. Now it says selective. Okay, so I can take, I can make my adjustments on this side over here, adjust the brightness and watch the brightness uh, adjustment on that little tree over there. It gets moved at the same time when I move this slider over here. So that's the way that works. Remember I told you to re how to reset, you double click here. Do not, and I repeat guys, do not ever double click here. If you do, your image will zoom into 100%. If you want to zoom into 100%, that's cool. But if you just want to reset your adjustment, you don't want to double click this adjustment to have it reset and have your image not reset and go into 100%. You're going to say, yuck, what happened? And then you're going to have to come back to your uh, normal size of your image to the full screen view. And then you're going to still have to reset your adjustment. So remember that. Do not double click here. Double click over on the right hand side of the interface here. Very, very important. Now, to make adjustments, guys, it's simple. But before we get into the adjustments, I want to show you something very cool. This area right here, when I drop the point down, I can click here and move this around to find a different point. Now, look at that loop in the bottom right-hand corner. See that little cursor that pops up? This helps you to accurately place that um, control point. So you can find the right spot. So for instance, I wouldn't want to get it on this dark area of the vein here because that wouldn't be a true representation of the leaf colors. So I want to find a color where a lot of that leaf is encompassed in one control point, which is right there, I think. So I'm going to leave it right there. Now here's another little trick. On a Mac, if you hold down your command key on a PC, hold down your control key. If you click here, and drag watch what happens this is really cool a lot of people don't know about this but a mask view pops up and this is powerful guys so it helps you to see whatever's in white is going to take the adjustment whatever's in black will not be adjusted and the way Vivesa works is it looks at colors it looks at tones it looks at textures i believe and it also looks at luminosity and that's how it determines what areas will be selected pretty powerful stuff going under going on under its engine or in its engine under the hood i should say 
All right, so there we go. And so that shows you the mask. And also, if you click the first slider here, and you notice this slider doesn't say anything, but it is what we would we would call the circle of influence. Now, when I click and drag this, see that circle? It tells how how much of the image will be affected by this control point. But if you hold that command or control key down, again, watch. You can see what's actually happening. Because if you don't hold the command or control key down, you won't know what you're getting adjusted here, okay, what's getting adjusted. So this really helps, guys. This is powerful. Remember this one. Okay, so right there. So let me make an adjustment now. So I can just come here and adjust my brightness. Let's take it up. Nah, I don't want to go that way. I want to go darker because I want my emphasis to be on my flower. So I'm just going to drop that a little bit, not that much, right around there. I'm going to give it a little extra contrast, which will uh, bump up the detail a little bit. Let's um, go to the structure, which is mid-tone uh, contrast, which will make things in the mid-tones look a little sharper. It makes your image look a little sharper. I want those veins to really pop out in those leaves. I want to see all that beautiful texture because I think that's a big element of this image here. And let's check the saturation. Let's give it a little more. Let's, let's, just, let's just give it a tad of saturation like that. Then I could come and adjust the shadows here. I don't really think I need to here. And I can make this image, these leaves look warmer or cooler warmer to the right, cooler to the left. And these are the, the uh, R, G, and B to mix the, the uh, colors here. So if I take this red and move this to the right, I'll add more red to my leaves. Pretty cool, right? If I move it to the left, I'll add more cyan to the leaves. Now, I was going to say double-click this, but do not double-click it, guys. Come over here and double-click. Very important. In the green, I can add more green to the leaves or more magenta to the leaves if I move it to the left. Don't want that, so let's double click it. Come to the blue, I can add more blue to the leaves, which I don't. I can add more yellow to the leaves, which doesn't look too bad, but I'm still gonna double click blue and set that back. I just wanna show you that. Or I could come and adjust the actual hue of the green tones. Okay, and again, double click. Remember, do it over here, guys, to reset that. So that's good. Now, if I wanna copy this control point here, guys, before I do, I feel that leaf is too saturated. So let me just pull that back a little bit right there. If you hold down the Option or Alt, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, hold that down and click and drag, you'll duplicate that point, which is really cool. And then you can just drag it into another area. So I want these leaves to be darker down here. I'm gonna Option, click it again and drag it over here I want to darken this side down see how quick you can make these adjustments guys and then up here I want to darken this leaf and this leaf so I'm going to get a new control point so let me just click that control point click right here and I'm going to click it and I'm going to do my little trick where I hold the command key down and drag this so I want to affect that leaf and that leaf and that looks like it's doing it guys right there so I just want to darken these leaves down a little bit but as you can see, guys, in real time, you can make these adjustments very, very fast. And that's done. I don't want to add any structure to that. And I'm really happy with this so far. Let's show you how to see before and afters. If you come up here to preview, give this a little check, a check, and you'll see the before and the after, before and after. And by the way, if you don't want to see these control points on your screen, if you just click off of the canvas and then hover up here, they disappear. So here again is the before and after. Pretty cool. And then you have uh, these three icons here, side-by-side -side preview, split preview, and single view. So let's click the side-by-side. -side. You see a side-by-side, -side, a top and bottom. Click here. You can see them side-by-side. -side. That's nice. Split preview here. And you can take and drag the slider and see the before and after, which is nice. Or you can come here to the single view right here and click. All right. So... There's our before and there's our after. Pretty good, guys. So the next thing I want to do is work on this flower. So let's get a new control point. Let's find a point in a flower. Maybe, see, I don't want to hit the dark veins. I want to hit right around in there. I'm looking at my loop to find the spot I want to drop my point. I'm going to give it a click. And now I'm going to hold my command key down and adjust my circle of influence so I can see the actual mask. Okay, and how much of that flower I want to encompass. Maybe right about there. Now, I'm thinking I don't want to make my flower brighter. Let's make, nope, I don't. I want to make it a little bit darker. I just want it to pop a little bit. Just a little bit darker. 
maybe right around there. I want to add some structure to the actual flower itself, just like so. Maybe give it a little bit of contrast, just a very little bit. And um, let's see if I add a little bit of blue to it. That would add yellow. So, mm, no, I don't like that. So I'm just going to come over here to the blue and double click. What if I add a little magenta? So let me go to the green slider and move it to the left. That should add some magenta. Do I want a little magenta added to it? I might want just a very slight amount. Right about there. I like that. Let me just click off the image here. Come up here. Let's look at it before and after now. Okay, so the flower is looking a little nicer. One last thing I want to do, guys, is come and make an adjustment on the center portion of the flower. Maybe add a little more saturation here. So come in here, drop a control point, hold the command or control key down, and adjust the circle of influence. So I only attack that point right there. I'm going to add some more saturation here. Oh, yeah, just a little saturation and maybe a little bit of structure to make that really, really pop. I like that. I'm going to click off the image here so the control points go away when I hover up here. Let's see a before and after. There's a before and after. Well, there it is, guys. I'm pretty satisfied with that. The only thing we need to do now is come down here and click OK. And we'll come back into Photoshop. Notice one thing here, it's really neat guys. You notice it says Vivesa 2 here. This is something that Nick does with all their software. Whenever you use one of their plugins, it will name the layer when it comes back into Photoshop after the plugin that you just used, okay? Which is really nice. So you know exactly what you used on that particular layer and I like that. Let's click the before and after. So there's the before and there's the after, all right? And I always like to take this opacity slider, drag the whole way to the left and then slowly drag it to the right and just add the right amount of that adjustment in. And I'm thinking maybe right around 82%. Let's look at the before and the after. So really nice adjustment, guys. I could have made this adjustment probably in about two minutes tops or less than that, actually. So it's really powerful and fast. So give that a try. Go over to the... Uh, DxO Nick Collection website and download a free trial and give that a try for yourself. And remember, it's only $69 right now. So I hope you enjoyed this one today, guys, and I hope you uh, give Avesa a try. And uh, stay tuned for more training videos coming your way. I'll be doing a lot more Nick Collection stuff for you, getting into silver effects and analog effects and and color effects. We're going to get into all that stuff. If you like this one today, guys, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon so you can be informed of all the new training videos that I'm constantly putting out for you guys. So I hope you're enjoying them and I will see you next time.